The man's habit of putting out his cigarette with his right hand caught the attention of the police because ordinary people don't do that. Only criminals have the habit of putting out their cigarettes and sharpening their fingerprints. He immediately sensed this man is suspected that he was involved in a murder case seven years ago. The truth was just as the police suspected. On the job, this man is a powerful police officer, but he's a rapist and murderer who's been in hiding for years. Seven years ago, there was a mass murder in Florida. A family of five was brutally murdered. The girl was assaulted and died suddenly. The murderer was brutal, but he was smart. Not a single fingerprint was found at the scene. However, the only omission of the criminal is dependent on the girl's body. Someone touched it, and that someone was Chad. After the incident, he made a habit of putting out his cigarettes and touching his fingerprints. Over the course of seven years, three criminals became decent people. Chad became a cop. He's always at the front of the line when it comes to crime. Perhaps he was redeemed by doing good deeds. Nick became a cab driver. He drove a cab every day of his life. Will became a fool after an accident. He lives in a fishing lodge with a girl he picked up three years ago. He lives in a fishery. That day, a new captain, John, was transferred to the police station. He had a lot of experience in the field. He was transferred from Florida and became Jack's boss. That day, while on a mission, the captain took one look at the cap next to him, and his eyes suddenly became very powerful. Jack realized that the captain's eyes were not right. He stopped the cap immediately. The captain loaded his pistol, quickly jumped out of the car. Jack saw that something was wrong. He followed him. Then he threatened the man in the car with his pistol. Jack yells at them to go up and get them. The driver was terrified. But suddenly, the man in the passenger seat reached into his bag. But the captain found him. He told him not to move his hand. Jack rushed over to support him. He took the passenger side suspect's bag. Until he opened the bag, he was dumbfounded on the spot. There was a handgun hidden inside. This operation that made Jack realize he was scared because the look in his boss's eyes was terrifying. But the fear was more than that. Late that night, Nick was driving a cab when he was robbed. Luckily, he was spotted by a police officers on patrol. The robber was terrified. He told his accomplices to hide their weapons. The man who came was the captain. <laughs> By now, the captain was already suspicious. He shined his flashlight on everyone. Just as Nick drove away from the captain and was about to get into his car, he suddenly found a dagger on the ground. The captain quickly got into the car and chased after him. But after chasing him for a while, he didn't find Nick's car, and Nick told Jack about it. What kind of you do? Jack once again used his right thumb and forefinger to put out the cigarette. Then he saw someone standing at the door. It was the captain who came back. Jack was afraid of being exposed for a long time, so he decided to move out of the dormitory. He and Nick found an apartment in the suburbs, but that move cost them both their lives. Jack told Nick, the new captain is very powerful. Nick advised him that if he really felt bad about it, he advised him to quit his job. The next day, Jack went to see the captain with his resignation letter. He saw the captain slamming the paper on the floor. Seeing that the captain was angry. He hesitated. He didn't say anything about his resignation. What happened later changed him. On this day, when the police station was on a mission, Ted, who was in the front of the line, suddenly fell into a dark hole underwater. His feet were caught in the steel mesh. He couldn't get out. He was about to drown. Captain jumped into the water. He tried to open the steel and pulled Jack's foot out. After returning from the mission, Xi Xiaofang was getting dressed. He fished out his resignation letter, which was already wet. He read it and finally threw it in the trash. The next day, while driving, the captain was chatting, suddenly brought up the tragic rape and murder case. By this time, Jack was already terrified. I can't tell he was thinking about it again. Panicked Jack slammed on the brakes, almost fell off the cliff. Both of them were terrified. Jack looks behind him. A dog runs out of the back of the car into the distance. <laughs> Jack takes his cigarette down. He puts it out with his right hand. This action aroused the captain's suspicion. Jack realized something was wrong. But the captain didn't listen because he was already suspicious of Jack and the tragedy. Jack turned the car around and continued on his way. The captain told the story of the crime. That day, Nick saw a woman's bag was robbed by the robbers. He was kind enough to chase the woman with him, finally chased the robbers to the bridge. At this point, there was no way out. The robber got out of the car and pulled out a dagger. But Nick was afraid. He got out of the car and picked up a stick on the ground. At this time, the woman also got out of the car. The robber wanted to take the woman first. When Nick was pulling the woman, Nick was cut in the abdomen by a dagger. But he also hit the robber on the head with a wooden stick. Then he covered his wounded abdomen with his clothes. He didn't stay to be thanked. He 
got in his car and left. When he got home, he fought back the pain. He took out a needle and white wine. He sterilized the wound with white wine. He began to sew up the wound himself. Every stitch was painful, but in order not to be discovered, he had no choice but to persevere. When Xin Xiaofang returned home, he found that Nick had fallen into a coma from the pain. He carried Nick on his back to the hospital. Just after arriving at the hospital, he received another call from Wu. Wu told him that Anna was pumping out. She's at the hospital now. When he got Anna's diagnosis, he had a nervous breakdown. Then he sat her down at Nick's bedside. It tells him that the captain has become suspicious of them. Nick decided to run away now and take his adopted daughter, Anna, to an orphanage. Just as they were about to leave, Jack suddenly burst into tears. He took out Anna's medical report from his pocket and showed it to Nick. It turned out that Anna was suffering from a disease. Without surgery, he won't live for a year. Nick felt remorseful. He slapped new Jack to the ground. He himself fell to the ground with a gaping wound. <laughs> In order to earn 50 zero yuan for Anna's treatment, both of them tried to make money, but one was just a cop, the other is a taxi driver. They couldn't come up with that kind of money in a short period of time. Suddenly they realized the captain was standing in the distance, and the girl beside him is the woman Nick saved a few days ago, so this woman is the captain's sister. The captain looked at Nick. Nick also looked at the captain. They both recognized each other, but they pretended not to recognize each other. They shook hands and said hello. At that moment, due to an emergency situation, Jack followed the captain to the scene. In the car, Jack confessed, they are three brothers, because the adopted child has a heart problem. He needs immediate surgery, so they were discussing how to raise money. Seeing that Jack was a bit upset, the captain didn't want to ask any more questions. The two of them went to the scene. They found the body of a man who jumped from a building lying on the ground. They went upstairs to check the scene, and the captain then went downstairs. While the captain went downstairs, Jack rushed to call Nick. <laughs> Jack was very scared. He didn't notice a man enter the house. He picked up the wine left on the table. He drank it all in one gulp and then headed straight for the balcony. Jack ran for it, but it was too late. When the man jumped off the balcony, he kicked over a potted plant next to him. <coughs> Just as he was about to fall, his clothes were hanging on the shelf where the flowers were. Xin Xiaofang arrived at that moment. She grabbed his clothes. The captain was talking to the case officers. The fallen potted plant caught his attention. The captain rushed in, but the elevator was still on the 27th floor. He chose to climb the stairs. When he was soaked to the skin, he ran into the hallway. He looked out onto the balcony. He saw Jack and the man lying on the balcony. He was also paralyzed with tears. Captain, in order to find out the truth of the case, he went to the master's house. The master told him that there was a detail in the case. The girl who was raped had a child with someone else. At that moment, he suddenly remembered the child named Anna. The next day, the police carried out an arrest. Looking at the scene of money flying around, Zi Xiaofan had an idea. But when he returned to his unit, the captain told him about the dangers. Jack didn't say a word. There was hesitation in his eyes. Suddenly stood up on the table and confessed that he'd taken the extra money himself. In fact, it was an extra 4,500. He thought he was going to be disciplined, but the captain's next gesture moved him. A few days later, the man Jack had saved came to see her at the station. The two of them exchanged warm greetings, and they drove off. On this day, the captain decided to follow them to see what they were doing. But what he saw shocked him. Jack looked down and told the captain. In fact, the three brothers from middle school. Since middle school, they had this dream. Then the captain called the master, tell him that the case back then may be wrong because the suspect could not have sex with a man. As Nick became attached to a pair of sisters, the crisis was approaching. One day, the sisters brought Nick to the rooftop and they undressed and approached Nick. Then they touched Nick's bottom. When he was confronted, Nick undid his shirt to reveal a tiger tattoo on his chest. Looking at the back of Nick's departure, the captain's sister was sad and puzzled. After returning home, he went to the captain's room to look for information. He finally saw the file of the murder case in his bag. However, the label on the third floor, but the captain found it when he came home. Then he went to the apartment where they lived alone. When he was leaving, the pair suddenly found a wire from the electric fan. On the electric fan, they found the wire of the wiretap. Following the wires, the pair found the landlord's room and found the bugging device. He flipped the switch. The conversation between Z and Nick into his ears. At that moment, the phone suddenly rang. It turns out the bureau has another mission. Two killers are working in the building. In pursuit, several policemen were lying in a pool of blood, and the captain slipped off the bridge. Luckily, 
He was caught by Wendy behind him, but he's already in the air. It's hundreds of meters below. A colleague was facing the robber. When the robber swung his axe, he accidentally fell 100 meters to the ground. This scene made the two men scared. The captain tried to shake off Jack's hand. The captain saw the robber approaching. Jack has not let go. He suddenly said, Jack looked at him in shock, so the captain already knew about the three brothers. As long as you let go, then no one will look into the case. But Xiaofan didn't choose to let go. At that moment, this Washington T team appeared on the rooftop. They pointed their guns at the robbers. The two who survived were lying on the rooftop. The captain told Xiaofan that the landlord had planted a bug downstairs, and all their conversations were recorded. At that moment, the captain's master arrived. The pair didn't look at him. Two policemen escorted Jack away. The next day, the captain came to the prison to visit. At this time they, one in police uniform, one in a prison uniform, they were separated by a wall. Finally, Jack and Nick were taken to the punishment cell, tied to the chaise lounge, waiting their final fate. As the drugs were injected into their veins, they died in the process of redemption.